Good day everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back. Today we have another affordable smartphone from China, but this time around the phone it's very quick. So this is called the Verni Apollo X. At the time of this video the phone costs around $180, but like anything else it really depends where you buy this phone from. For specs we have the Helio X20 CPU, this is a deca-core CPU, you also have 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage and the phone is running Android 6. Unfortunately the phone looks kind of boring and it looks just like all the other smartphones that we've seen from China in the past year. So we have metal on the back, we have some plastic at the top and at the bottom and a 5.5 inch screen on the front. Now the phone is a bit smaller than most other phones with 5.5 inch screens that I've tried and I guess that's a plus but the phone is still a bit too big to actually use it in one hand. The back of the phone is made out of metal but I have to say that this phone is a fingerprint magnet and it's very difficult to actually keep this phone clean. So the top and at the bottom we have plastic and that's probably covering some antennas and aside from that we have a 13 megapixel camera, this is a Sony IMX258 sensor, we also have a dual tone flash and a fingerprint scanner. The fingerprint scanner is accurate 99% of the time but it's not the fastest that I've seen so all you have to do is touch the fingerprint scanner and the phone will unlock but as I said it's not the fastest fingerprint scanner out there. The sides of the phone are a continuation of the back and they are also made out of metal so on the right hand side you're gonna find the power button and the volume keys. The buttons are nice and clicky and they are also made out of metal. On the other side we have two SIM card slots and one of them can actually be used for an SD card and of course you can always install an SD card as internal storage. Out of that 64 gigs of internal storage that comes with the device we have about 55 gigs left and the speeds that I got for the internal storage are very good as well. And moving to the top side of the phone there we have a 3.5mm audio jack and the sound coming out with that audio jack is great, I have no complaints whatsoever. And all the way at the bottom we are gonna find what looks to be like two speakers, however that's a, a speaker and a microphone. And in between them we have a USB-C charging port. This phone also supports OTG and fast charging, so charging this phone from 0 to 100 it's done very very quickly in about an hour and 10, an hour and 20 minutes. As for the speaker, yes, it gets quite loud, but there is no bass, so the sound is kind of flat. Inside the Apollo X we have a 3500 mAh battery, but as you know the Helio X20 is not the most power efficient CPU, therefore the battery life is not great. So you're gonna be able to make it through an entire day and get about 3 hours, 3 hours and a half of screen on time, but not that much, but at least we have fast charging available. And we are moving to the front of the phone and unfortunately the front doesn't look that spectacular either. So we have big bezels all around the screen. On top there we have a 5 megapixel front facing camera, a couple of sensors, an LED notification light and a speaker. That front facing camera takes decent looking pictures as long as you have plenty of light. As soon as you don't have enough light the pictures become very very grainy and of course the pictures that you've just seen are actually taken with the Apollo X. The 5.5 inch screen has a resolution of 1080p, the viewing angles are also great, the colors are okay, not the most vibrant that I've seen, but the screen doesn't seem to get that bright, so whenever you go outside in broad daylight it is a bit difficult to actually see the screen. The screen sensitivity is great, I haven't had any issues whenever I was typing or playing games and the, you can touch the screen in 5 places in the same time and the screen will register. On top of that we have some type of scratch resistant glass and of course I try scratching it and it doesn't seem to get scratched. And lastly we have on screen buttons and you can actually change those from the software so if you want the return key on the other side you can just place it on the other side from the software so very nice and easy. Since we have the Helio X20 CPU and that's a very powerful CPU the scores that we get on the Antutu benchmark and the Geekbench 4 are high but that's uh, quite normal for that CPU and to be honest I haven't found anything that would slow this phone down so no matter what you do with this phone it works great. Using Chrome works just as good as it would work on a Samsung Galaxy S8 for example. So you can scroll up, scroll down, zoom in, zoom out, pretty much do anything that you want. The phone is not going to slow down at all. Using the YouTube app, the maximum resolution is 1080p and that's the maximum resolution of the screen. And you can watch videos at 1080p at 60 frames per second and all the videos seem to go very smooth as well. I've also tried a couple of games on the phone and of course with that Helio X20 the phone doesn't slow down at all and there is absolutely no lag so I'm pretty sure that you can play pretty much any game available in the Google Play Store and the phone will do fine. And on top of that multitasking also works great so you can keep a whole bunch of apps running in the background because we have 4 gigs of RAM and the phone is not gonna kill any of those apps running in the background. The GPS unit inside this phone is also very quick so it only takes a couple of seconds to connect to the satellites and I haven't found the phone disconnecting from the satellites at all. Of course using Google Maps also works very well without any issues. We also have a whole bunch of sensors inside this phone including a gyroscope and all the sensors that I've tried seem to work fine without any issues. 
The call quality is also decent but the speaker on top here doesn't get that loud so it really depends where you are because if you're in a very noisy environment you're not going to be able to hear that well um, whatever it's coming out from that speaker. The phone can connect to 4G networks um, and here in Canada I was actually connected to the 4G networks um, the entire time that I've used the phone but definitely check uh, with your provider to make sure that the bands actually match. The phone also supports dual band Wi-Fi and the speeds that I got over Wi-Fi and over the 4G network are very good. On the back of the phone we have the Sony IMX258 image sensor and that's a pretty good camera. Now unfortunately the camera app, um, well I can't say the same about it. So we have the exact same MediaTek camera app that we've seen for many many Chinese devices in the past. So we don't really have any options or settings in the camera app there. Now we have an HDR mode but the camera app overall it's quite slow. So even though we have that fast X20 CPU the camera app it's still a bit too slow for my taste. The picture quality from this camera is great but I have to say that I've seen better pictures from that Sony IMX258 for other smartphones in the past. If you have a lot of light the pictures turn out with a lot of detail and the colors are very accurate and you can even get that cool bokeh effect depending on how you position the camera. But I can't really say the same about low light conditions so as soon as you don't have enough light the pictures become kind of blurry and out of focus and of course all the pictures that you've just seen or taken with the Apollo X. Software-wise, the phone is running Android 6 and I'm not sure when or if this will be updated to Android 7. It would be nice to have an update but who knows when that will happen. Now the software is very close to stock Android and I haven't seen the phone slowing down for anything. So closing apps, opening new apps, uh, moving in between screens, everything is done very very quickly and without any issues. The settings app also looks just like stock Android and the only added feature that I found in there was the ability to move those navigation buttons around. Aside from that it's just like stock Android so very very good. So there you have it, this is the Verni Apollo X, so I really don't have any bad things to say about this phone. I wish the battery life would have been better, but um, we know that that Helio X20 CPU it's not the best um, CPU for power efficiency out there. But aside from that, for a phone that costs about $170-$180, I think it performs very very well. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you did like it, press that like button, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.